Hi, this is Justin Gluddy of Sonic Scoop, and thanks for joining me for our first look series, where we get to take a first look at some really new and interesting audio gear. And this installment is very new and very interesting from Cali Audio. Our friends at Cali sent me this new set of speakers. This is the Cali Audio IN8 studio monitors. And there's a few design principles here that are really unique, really unusual, really different. And in addition to just exploring the design of this speaker, which is a lot more than meets the eye at first, I think we'll also go over some principles that are important in speaker design and speaker selection in general. And two of the most important concepts here are that this is a three-way speaker design and it's a coaxial speaker design. That may sound like Greek to you, or maybe you've heard these terms before, but both of these are really important, and they're important to think about in speaker design in general. And I, as much as possible, try to advocate people, particularly in mixing, try to migrate as much as they can from two-way speaker designs to three-way speaker designs. And there are a few reasons for this. But first, what is a two-way versus a three-way speaker design? Well, a two-way usually has a woofer and a tweeter where a three-way usually has three separate drivers, a big woofer, a separate mid-range driver, and a tweeter. And this is beneficial for a few reasons I'm gonna to go to in just a second. But you may say just by looking at the speaker, how is this a three-way design? I see a woofer here, I see a tweeter up here. That's because this is a coaxial design, or some people will call it a coincident design. One brand called it for a while a dual concentric design, where in this case, the mid-range driver and the tweeter are actually both in the same spot. So there's a little tweeter inside of this larger mid-range driver. Now, these two features have two really significant benefits. And first, I want to talk about the simplest of the two, which is moving from a two-way speaker to a three-way speaker. Three-way speaker designs, by giving you an additional driver for the mid-range, make it so that you bring your mid-range into a lot more focus and you get to hear a lot more detail and really know what's going on in the mid-range in a way that you just can't with a two-way speaker. With a two-way speaker design, you might have the woofer taking care of all frequencies from, say, your lowest lows of 20 hertz, maybe up through your mid-range of maybe as high as 1.5 kilohertz, 1500 hertz. So you'd actually have a lot of different frequencies being handled by the low frequency driver. And then your high frequency, your tweeter in a two-way, could be responsible from er for everything from 1500 hertz all the way up to 20,000. And one of the problems with this is that these larger speakers are really good at moving a lot of you know, low frequency air, but as you're kind of cranking them towards their capacity, you can get some smearing and compression in the mid-range. And the mid-range kind of takes a little bit of a back seat. And with the tweeter, it's the same kind of thing. These are going to be really efficient, particularly at moving very high frequencies, but some of that mid-range, instead of being really forward and detailed, can kind of take a little bit of a backseat. And what you find in even some of the best two-way speaker designs compared to a three-way is that the mid-range is just softened a little bit. And this is particularly the case the more and more you turn those speakers up. The louder you're pushing the driver, the less well it's going to represent your mid-range compared to your low end, and the more that mid-range gets kind of softened and veiled a little bit. And this can actually sound kind of pleasant, but it won't necessarily give you that warts and all imaging that you really want out of a mixing speaker. And the great thing about a good three-way speaker design is it's going to tell you in no uncertain terms when your mid-range sounds annoying. <laughs> and that is a super useful feature to have in a speaker, particularly for mixing and also for mastering. So I hope I've sold you to some degree on three-way speakers. The big problem though with three-way speaker designs is that they are a lot more expensive generally. And that's where this Cali Audio comes in. This is one of the most interesting things about this monitor is just how inexpensive it is for being a three-way design. Usually you're probably spending, I don't know, 1,500 bucks, 2,500 bucks, 3,000 bucks on a pair of speakers before you're getting into really good three-way designs. But with this Cali Audio speaker, the price is 399 per speaker. That's 798 for the pair. So for under a thousand bucks, there are not many three-way speakers available at all in the pro audio world. This is one of maybe two that comes to mind right off the top of my head being a three-way in this price range.
And the other big thing that makes it unique is that it's able to deliver this in a smaller package because of this coaxial or coincident design where you have the mid-range frequency and the tweeter driver right in the same spot. Now, the great thing about coaxial designs, and these are really uncommon, is that you get much greater phase coherence. You get better phase coherence both with the sound that's coming right off the speaker, but even as importantly, or maybe even more so, the reflections off the wall. And that's where a lot of two-way designs are a little bit lacking. A lot of speakers that just have a woofer and a tweeter, they'll have an acoustic device called a waveguide around the tweeter. And if you look at a picture of the Cali Audio LP6 or any other two-way monitor, you'll see maybe a little bit of elliptical shape or a little bit of kind of a geometric shape around the tweeter. And that is trying to widen out the stereo image and give you more clarity and precision in the stereo image and trying to even out the reflections from the wall so that they're more in phase and more phase coherent with what's coming off of the direct signal of your speaker. Well, the great thing with the coaxial design is that you don't really need a waveguide. It automatically is already phase coherent, both with the signal that's coming directly to you and the reflected signal off the wall it isn't going to have that kind of coloration and acoustic smearing that you get when you have a more conventional speaker design with a waveguide. The other problem with these waveguides that are built into speakers, although they're really effective generally in the horizontal direction, they're generally made so that in the vertical direction they don't work quite as well. So a lot of two-way speakers won't sound quite as good if you place them on their side. But again, with this coaxial design where you don't need a waveguide, the speaker is going to sound basically identical whether you put it on your side or put it upright. You don't need to worry about whether you have a speaker that's made for horizontal orientation or made for vertical orientation. They'll work especially well in both directions. So one of the big features for a coaxial design is the precision in the stereo imaging. That is a big thing. And I've got to say, the two places where these speakers, I would say, are absolutely best in class, having really listened to them at some length here in the studio, is in those two places where you should most expect it based on these design principles. They have, bar none, easily, the best mid-range I have heard on speakers for under $1,000. I don't know of anything that sounds better for mid-range in the under $1,000 price range, not to mention the under $800 price range. Having a three-way speaker at all of really good quality or even in existence in this price range is extremely uncommon. So big kudos to these guys for delivering one. Their LP6 and now LP8 have already kind of taken the studio world by storm. A lot of people are talking about how amazing those speakers are, particularly the LP6s that are like 150 bucks each, 300 bucks for the pair. And you're really not going to find a speaker that performs better at that price point. And I would say, again, they're kind of shattering price barriers that people are accustomed to. First of all, offering a three-way speaker under a thousand bucks, which is uncommon, and then offering a coaxial design for under... Honestly, I don't know of a speaker design that's quite like this three-way and coaxial that's under $4,000. So it's really a class unto itself. One of the other really brilliant parts of this design is that they made the coaxial function not be part of the lower frequency driver. And when you have a tweeter built into a low frequency driver, like a couple of brands do, you can get problems with intermodulation distortion, where when you have the tweeter riding on top of the waves of that woofer, you get potentially, if you're putting out enough low end, a kind of, it can be almost like a choppy robotic effect if it's not designed properly, or if you're driving the low end too much. And the way a lot of speakers that have a tweeter inside the woofer for a coax design get around this is by limiting the amount of low end that the speaker can push out or using an even larger and larger speaker and making it a bit more rigid so it's not really upsetting the waveform coming off of the tweeter. Cali gets around this completely by just doing the simple and genius thing of putting the tweeter inside the mid-range driver so you get all the benefits of a coaxial design without some of those uh, occasional and possible drawbacks of having a tweeter potentially inside the big woofer on a coax design. The other place where this speaker really excels in addition to the mid-range is what you'd expect from uh, a coaxial design 
it is that the stereo spread on this thing is unlike any other speaker in its price range. Comparing this to speakers, again, under $1,000, not to mention under $800, the precision in which I could locate elements in the stereo field really unparalleled. So those absolutely the two biggest strengths here, just the amount of detail and focus in the mid-range without the speaker getting harsh, and the precision in the stereo spread on these speakers, whether you have them on their side or vertically, phenomenal. The high end here is just as good or better than anything in its class or price range. It's designed to really be neutral on the top, and it's not going to have like a fizzy presence boost that's going to sound annoying over time. It's just meant to sound really neutral and clean. It does that effectively and well. And because you've got an 8-inch speaker, it goes down pretty darn deep. Now, what are the potential drawbacks of these speakers with all of these accolades? Honestly, for the amount of money you're going to spend, there's not much that I can say. There are two things that come to mind for me. One, plugging these speakers in, they're not quite as banging loud as some other speakers in the same price range. Other speakers will focus maybe a little bit more on delivering a lot of level from less expensive amplifiers. They opted for amplifiers that are really clean and effective and going for a slightly lower wattage. So if they aren't loud enough for you, just turn up your monitors and they turn up really well. That would be the only thing where if you're working in a multiple speaker studio environment, you might find it beneficial to just take a moment to level match these to your other speakers so that you know some more banging speakers aren't louder than them. But these get plenty loud enough. They have a max SPL of I think about 115 dB. And if you're listening that loud, you are stupid and you're going to go deaf. So they absolutely get loud enough. But that is the only thing I can think of someone criticizing these out of the box on. But it really isn't a problem when you just turn them up. I actually went looking for additional critiques on these speakers, and I couldn't really find anything except for a couple of forum comments saying something about a little bit of noise. But in evaluating them here, I just didn't hear anything out of the ordinary. The other thing, like I said, is they're not hype you up speakers. And it can be useful to have at least one pair of hype you up speakers in the studio. They can be fun to create on. Sometimes it's nice to get a speaker that's maybe not the most neutral one in your studio when you're sitting there with the clients and really wanting them to feel excited about the take that they just did. And you want to put something up on some bigger mains that are maybe a little bit less flat, a little louder, a little bit more hype. That can be useful. These aren't those. They go for a little bit more neutrality and kind of a response you can trust. That said, they are also fun to listen to. But the great thing about them is that when your mid-range is annoying, they will let you know. And that's a beautiful thing about a three-way design that you often don't get out of a two-way design. I feel like I might not have totally completed my thought earlier about why I love three-way design so much for mixing, but it's because when you're taking the job of the mid-range off this low frequency speaker, and you're taking the job of the mid-range off the high frequency speaker, you don't end up with a softened mid-range. And that's my big problem with two-ways, is that sometimes on two-way speakers, the mid-range just takes a little bit of a back seat, especially as the speaker starts to get louder. Like the mid-range compresses a little bit. All this energy is going to this woofer to push out your low end, and then your mid-range gets kind of compressed and takes a slight back seat, especially as a speaker goes up in level. With a speaker like this, you don't have that problem of the mid-range compressing and taking a back seat to the high highs, which the tweeter moves so efficiently, and the low lows, which the woofer moves so efficiently. So that's the general idea here. The other big thing that's a little different about Cali, other than the price points, which are remarkable, the LP6 again being 300 bucks for a pair, these being 800 bucks for a pair, and the only speakers I can think of that have anything resembling a similar design are like 4,000 bucks a pair. The other big thing is on the back of this, and I'll turn that around and show it to you now. And if you can see, here on the back of this speaker, there is this beautiful little EQ chart and some of these dip switches. And it gives you some ideas on how you might want to set the EQ based on where you're placing in a room. It has a really simple diagram. So it says, if you're less than a half meter from your wall, so if you're like a foot and a half or less, press these three switches. If you are greater than a foot and a half, try these three switches. 
If you're on top of a meter bridge, try these three switch placements. Uh, essentially, a kind of idiot sheet to EQing your speakers properly for any environment you're going to place them in. So it really is a very simple and straightforward approach to getting more out of the speaker by solving common EQ problems that come from a variety of speaker placements that a lot of people find themselves putting their set of speakers in. Well, that is about it for today. I hope this overview and first look at the Cali Audio in 8 not only gave you an idea of what makes this speaker interesting and different, but some of the core components in speaker design in general. One of them being the big difference between two-way and three-way speakers, and another being the big difference between coincident or coaxial designs as opposed to more conventional multi-driver designs. This episode has been brought to you by the folks at Cali Audio who sent me this lovely pair of speakers that I hope I don't have to send back. I've really been enjoying listening to stuff on these. Like I said, the things that stand out for me is the stereo imaging and the detail in the mid-range and just the quality at the price point. A great option for you guys and hopefully this will help clarify some of the main design features and give you a better sense for whether these might be the right speakers for you. The best thing to do, as always, with speakers is to recognize that they are a deeply personal choice. So if you can get into the room and listen to a set of speakers like these, whether that is at a dealer or getting multiple speakers to evaluate shipped to you, you know, sometimes you can get demo units uh, done that way. No matter what, it's always great to be able to hear these things for yourself and make sure you're getting a set of speakers that is really best for you. I can't tell you what speakers you're going to love the most or do the best work on, but hopefully I can give you some ideas based on these design principles and my own impressions. Thanks for joining me for this installment in our first look series, this time brought to you by Cali Audio. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notifications bell. Also, if you got any questions about the design of these speakers or if you've heard them for yourself and have your own impressions, hit us in the comments below. I try to read every single one and respond when I can. Thanks again for hanging out with me. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. See you next time.